Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Coach Frazier. How are you doing that this afternoon? I'm doing well, George. How are you? Good and well. Doing well. After another good game, boy, week after week, we seem to have a lot of good defensive uh, plays here. And my, my first question is, Terrell Doxson, how would you uh, rate his play at the uh, linebacker position? Yeah, George, we were really pleased uh, with the effort that he gave us. Uh, did a good job of leading. As you know, he was filling some big shoes. Uh, Tremaine Evans has been so good for us, but Terrell had a really good week of practice and he went out and performed at a high level. Uh, there were really no hiccups in the game. He, he was outstanding in the run game, helped us in, uh, versus the pass. Uh, good assignment wise, he played very well for us. And, and my second question, last question for you, the two safeties, it seemed like they were on point. They didn't seem any confusion at all. Any, it didn't look like any blown coverages in your defense yesterday. How, how would you uh, rate the, the two safeties? Yeah, they were much improved from a couple of weeks ago when they got their first start together. And uh, they really have grown uh, over the last couple of weeks. And it, it was evident in the way they played on yesterday. Because you're right, there weren't, there, we didn't have the bus. We didn't have the missed assignments. They tackled very well. They covered extremely well. Uh, they were on point in their responsibilities. So, it, was, it really helped our defense to have a good performance uh, yesterday because of the way our safeties played. Great. Well, thank you very much, and good luck this coming week. Thank you. Hey, Leslie, John Worrell. Hey, John. Are the Chiefs a little bit more balanced with um, without Tariq and maybe leaning more a little bit more on Hilaire from what you've seen? Um, it's, it's so early in the season, John. It seems like. Uh, they are trying to incorporate the run a little bit more, uh, but it's still very early in the season, and they do have some very capable receivers. Uh, so they're still pushing the ball down the field and spreading it out probably a little bit more than what they have in the past, but it does seem like they want to get the run game going for sure. Right. Um, and now on, on to the elephant in the room, are 13 seconds, is that a bad, is that a profanity around your parts? The words 13 seconds? No, not unless you're not in my parts. Uh, I'm not so superstitious about the number 13 personally. So, nope, not at all. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm referring, of course, to what happened. The 13, the, the games, the game was called. It's been nicknamed 13 seconds from January. Yeah, my response would be nope, not at all. No, fair enough. Um, do you do you have to bring that up or do you do you feel in, in your team in defensive meetings on Wednesday, do you feel the players need to hear from you on the what happened the last time you faced them um, or not? No, you know, we'll cover scenarios uh, that we may be put in during the course of the game. And I won't, I don't think I'll specifically uh, go back to 2021. Uh, I haven't done it in any of our other games up to this point. I don't see the need to do it. Uh, and this for this ball game either. Fair enough. Thank you, Leslie. You will. Hey, Leslie, how would you assess the way Kyrie Elam played yesterday against the Steelers? You know, overall, John, I thought he did a, a good job of not giving up, you know, touchdowns. And, and there were some completions that they had. I mean, that's a good receiving core uh, that they have in Pittsburgh. And uh, I think overall, he did a really good job. He tackled well enough. Uh, if you're targeted, uh, you, they're going to catch some balls in our league on corners. Uh, you just got to be able to hold up and not give up the explosives on a continuous basis down the field. And I thought he did a good job of controlling that and managing that uh, with the number of times they, they tried to you know, take some shots uh, where he was lined up at. What sort of communication do you have with him or I guess a player in general in the middle of a game who – getting targeted a lot, probably giving up more than he is accustomed to or wants to, especially with Kair, we understand, even though it's still early getting to know him, that, that he holds himself to a, a high accountability and, and seems to almost get down on himself, even at maybe allowing one sort of catch. Yeah, you know, you're right. He has high standards for sure. He doesn't want him to catch one ball and uh, but it's, that's hard to, to see happen in, in, at, at the corner of the NFL. You're gonna, they're going to catch some balls. You just got to you know, win your share and do a good job of not giving up the plays over the top. And um, the, the one thing I try to do is encourage a, a player in those situations, 
point out the things they're doing well, but for sure uh, point out the areas where I think they can improve uh, in between plays. You know, when they come over on, on the sideline, and you get a chance to go through some of the uh, things that have happened in the previous series. You know, that's my chance to really talk to them and try to encourage them and try to point out some things I think might might help them once they go back on the field. And then lastly, with Kair, we know game experience is probably the most valuable a player can earn. How have you seen him grow, develop over the past few weeks where he's played and started an entire game? Yeah, I really liked uh, a lot of the things he did in the Baltimore game, as well as what he did yesterday from a tackling standpoint and being more connected with the receivers and coverage. Uh, the one play, John, where they threw uh, the play to, the, to number 14 down the field, uh, and it was a jump ball situation. He was in good coverage, uh, just finding a way to get his hand in there, maybe punch that out. Uh, but the fact that he was connected to the receiver, he was in good position, that's a good sign. And that's something that you can build on. And I'm really happy that he's, he's been able to get some exposure, get some, some work that we can coach off of from a, a coaching standpoint, getting some tape that we can look at, see where we need to grow at, uh, especially this time of the year in October. So this is good for him. It's good for us as well, just to see the things we need to do just to continue to bring him along. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome. Coach Frazier, Mookie Hawkins, Waffle Sports 1080. How you doing today, sir? Doing good, Mookie. How are you? I'm doing good, and we all know the hunt for Red October continues. Um, and but your defense is hey, it, it, they're doing one one hell of a job, Coach. But I mean, with the influx of of, of of players, the moving parts that you have to deal with on the week to week, and mm -hmm. to remain consistent is just you know awesome. So with that being said, Coach, how does this defense stay consistent? Will allowing, um, you know, under a 200 passing yards versus an elite passer in Patrick Holmes. Yeah, I mean, you, you, when you say elite, you're right. That's a good description for him. He is an elite passer for sure. Uh, one of the best quarterbacks in our league. And, you know, we obviously will have our hands full and trying to contain him. And he's got some weapons around him as well. So uh, it'll be a big challenge, but we're going to try to put together a good plan, Mookie, that will uh, give us the best chance to win. And then we go out and, you know, you let the chips fall where they may. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So as a defensive coordinator, you know, what gives you the most joy when talking about this defense the first five weeks, Coach? Um, there are so many uh, superlatives when I think about some of the things our guys are doing. But one of the things that sticks out, look, is the way they really bond together, uh, as you mentioned earlier. We've had some guys in and out of the lineup and some that are out permanently, like uh, Micah Hyde, who has been a tremendous leader for us, a tremendous player for us. Uh, but just to see how the guys haven't blinked, how uh, they have come to work every single day and just work to improve uh, with new guys in and out of the lineup. For example, Terrell Dotson having to step in and fill a very important role uh, in our defense to support that the other guys gave Terrell the support the other guys gave uh, Jaquan and DeMar, that's what encourages you, man, because then you know you have a chance to weather whatever storms may, may come because the guys are playing together and pulling for one another, and that's what makes me proud about our guys, how much they pull for one another and how much they play for one another. No doubt, Coach. Appreciate your time. Good luck next week. Thank you. Hi, Leslie. Um, you, you, you played a lot of good quarterbacks the last couple of seasons. I mean, Tom Brady, you'll play Aaron Rodgers, you play Lamar a couple of times, but it's almost like Patrick Mahomes has been like kind of like a division type of quarterback for you guys. Cause you played him so much over the last couple of years. And in that preparing for a guy so much, what would you say for him who, you know, he's kind of like this unicorn of elite passer and can move with the ball, the mobility and the out of structure. What is the, biggest challenge if you could say preparing for him you you you, you named it uh in a lot of ways the mobility the accuracy uh, how smart he is a player so many things that make it hard uh as a defensive coordinator to prepare uh for what he's capable of doing because there's some things you can prepare for matt but he does things that you can't prepare for you know you can show some plays on tape and you go there aren't many guys that can do this, you know, so it's, there's so many rarities in his game and uh, he's a special player for sure. And you just got to find a way to the, disrupt the timing somehow. 
Uh, but he's going to make some plays. Uh, he's too talented not to. You just got to limit the, the number of plays that he makes, but he's going to make some plays. Um, what do you tell your players, especially the young guys, because you have to rely on a lot of them um, the last couple of weeks, this season in general, about staying in the moment? They do a good job of that, but emphasizing that staying in the moment because he's going to make plays. It's almost like you go in knowing no matter what you do, how good you play, he could still make plays and staying, not letting one play necessarily lead to more bad ones. Well, that's a great point you're making because that is a part of the conversation when you go against an elite player of Patrick Mahomes caliber. And uh, that's something we'll talk about. Uh, you can't let one play affect the next play. You got to be able to move on because you're right. He's going to make some plays. And if you're not careful, you're sitting there rewinding that play in your head and here comes another play. And all of a sudden you're behind the eight ball and trying to catch up and, and that can be uh, really tough. So you have to be able to move on and play the next play and, and, and put your focus and attention on that play and not the previous one or looking ahead to the next one. And uh, that's something we'll talk about as a defense and as a staff, as we prepare for this ball game. And sorry, one more quick one. Um, sorry. I know there's some hands up, but um, Damar Hamlin, I asked Taryn Johnson about him and Jaquan, but Damar specifically because he started the last couple of games and he said, there's been no drop off from him to Micah. Now, there's a lot of things that Micah does that, you know, is very still early on for DeMar, but he just basically said it's the standard. Like he's expected to play at a certain level and he, th and he's trying to do that, but it's one thing to say that and then fill in for an all pro caliber player for Micah Hyde, like Micah Hyde. How has he done so well? You know, I try my best not to compare him to, to Micah because Micah, had, he does so many things for us. And, you know, I can, it's a whole list of things that he does, not only, on the field, but in the locker room, in the huddle, uh, his leadership, just so many things. So I try not to compare him that, uh, but the things that DeMar has done well, uh, his preparation has been on point and he's utilized his gifts, his strengths. I mean, he's a very good tackler, evidenced by yesterday. Uh, and he's gotten better at being assignment sound and some of that has been uh, just being time on task for him, just being able to get the reps, although he got a lot of reps in the off season. It's nothing like playing games. Uh, the speed, the tempo. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I try not to compare them, but just, just try to let DeMar be himself and let him grow at his own pace. And I think that's what Jimmy Salgado, his position coach, is stressing as well. Let DeMar be himself and, and not compare the two. Uh, but up to this point, he's done a very good job for us. And we think he's just going to continue to grow uh, in that position. Thanks a lot, Leslie. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, I know John touched on this a, a little bit, but uh, how much different is this offense maybe more broadly without Ty Hill and maybe more so in the passing game? Yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, somewhat different. Um, you know, it's hard to sit here and say it's not when you take a, a, a player of the caliber of Tariq out of that uh, equation. Uh, he was such a big part of what they did in creating explosives. Uh, uh, for their offense, but they still are very efficient. Uh, they still are doing a very good job of scoring points uh, and attacking defenses. And as long as you have Patrick Mahomes at quarterback, uh, there's not going to be a huge drop off. Uh, so I don't want to get it twisted. I mean, he's he's still the straw that stirs the drink and, and he makes that offense go and he's able to get all the other players involved. And that's something that's probably a little bit different and what they did before when they targeted two or three players. Now they're spreading it around a little bit more. They're involved in the run game a little bit more. And that makes it hard on defenses as well. It's harder to zero in on a certain package per, per se. You call them the, the straw that stirs the drink. You know, this is a drink that you guys have been sipping a lot the last couple of years, seeing this team twice a year. How much different of a prep is it for you now with that guy out of the mix? Um. It'll be somewhat different, but still, like I said earlier, as long as you have uh, Patrick at quarterback, it presents all types of challenges. So the preparation revolves around the quarterback and being able to handle some of the things that he does. That's, and it's always been that way. Uh, it regards who was that receiver. It's always been about their quarterback. Cool. Thank you very much, Leslie. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, I don't think anybody's asked you about this yet, um, but obviously they still have Travis Kelsey 
Um, and just, you know, we've, we always ask you about this when you guys face the chiefs, but, um, he's still playing at such a high level, uh, you know, how do you go about trying to limit his production and limit what he can do offensively for them? Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Uh, he's a, he's a very, uh, good tight end for sure. Maybe the premier, uh, tight end in our league and, uh, the top target in clutch situations uh, for their offense. So uh, you don't want to forget about him at all. Uh, he, he's a guy that can really wreck the game, and uh, he's a handful, and we'll have to figure out ways to slow him down and, and minimize uh, the damage that he does. But you're not going to completely shut him down. Uh, you just got to be able to control some of the effectiveness that uh, he can provide for an offense. Uh, but he's still a premier tight end for sure. You guys have been really good against opposing tight ends, you know, and limiting what they can do and limiting their um, their catches, despite maybe the the targets that the the opposing quarterbacks are giving them um, and going up against uh, some tight ends that really get involved in their passing games like you know Tyler Higby, Mike Kosicki, um, you know, Mark Andrews, guys like that. Is it just a the the reason that you guys have been so good against opposing tight ends? Is it just kind of a, a product of the way the game is flowing, or is there something that you know? Is there some kind of I guess uh, reason for that, or is there anything that you can pinpoint to of of why you guys have been so good in that area this season? Well, like a lot of defenses, you know, we pay attention to that position and the way it's evolved uh, in our league because those tight ends and more almost like receivers. I mean, they're targeted almost as much as the receivers now. So you really have to pay attention to that position and have to have a plan for them. And it just so happens that things have worked out uh, where on most occasions the tight ends haven't uh, harmed us to the point where it hurts us with what we're trying to do with wide receivers. So, uh, but I don't know if there's any one specific thing uh, Heather, other than mm -hmm. the awareness that we provide for our players and making them aware of a guy like Travis Kelsey, who has the potential to really wreck a game if you don't pay attention to them. And then it's just a matter of our going out and executing game plan from there. And when you say, you know, the the awareness, is that also a product of, of how involved um, the opposing quarterbacks are getting some of these tight ends? Like, like you know, when you're looking on film and you're saying like, hey, you know, Mark Andrews has been Lamar Jackson's favorite target this season. Like, is, is also that? a part of the equation of just um, how much they're targeted, how much they're used, the awareness there, I guess, as well. Absolutely. You're, 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 you're taking the, uh, the conversation I'll have with our secondary, what you just said is what we're talking about sometimes, raising that awareness of uh, how frequently uh, this particular player, and we're talking about the tight end uh, position here, yeah. uh, is targeted uh, in certain situations. He's the guy that, that this quarterback wants to go to uh, say, for example, in the red zone or on first and 10 or third, whatever it may be, just raising that awareness for our players so they can have that in their minds uh, when the situation comes up. Well, this is the guy. So we got to be ready to defend him in this situation. Gotcha. Thank you, Leslie. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Hey, Coach, I know you've gone a little long today, so really appreciate it. Um, your no defense. Problem. Your defense has allowed seven total points in the second halves of games, um, pitched a shutout basically in four out of five games. Can you give fans a little bit of an insight? What happens at halftime? Just in general, how does halftime work in an NFL locker room? Well, for us, uh, so what we do is, you know, we'll come together as a defensive staff as soon as we get in the locker room and we'll talk through some of the things that have happened in the first half in particular, something that may have hurt us in that first half that, that we want to get corrected. Uh, and then we'll talk about what adjustments we might want to make, uh, if any. And then I'll get in front of our defense and I'll talk to him, talk to those guys about uh, some of the changes, if there are any changes, and just give them a little talk about what we got to get done this second half, you know, what's going to be important for us as we get ready for this third quarter, and particularly if we're the, the first one up like we were yesterday coming out of the half. Uh, so in a nutshell, that's about the way it goes. Uh, after I've talked with our staff and talking to our players, and once I'm done talking with our players and the position coaches get a chance to break off and just kind of detail some of the things I've just talked about in general to our defense. So you only have like eight, 10 minutes maybe to do all that. I mean, yeah. that's got to be challenging at times. Right. I mean, that's got to be a little challenging. So 
what does it say about your players to kind of retain that, do that all in that quick time and get out on the field and execute that? Yeah, you're, I mean, it's a challenge because you got to be so concise and so precise in what you have to say and really on point. You can't be a lot of uh, fluster and, and, and bluster. You got to get to the point and it has to have meaning in order for it to connect. So um, we try to not just come up with fluffy words, but just get to the point of what we want to get accomplished. And, and you count on the players being able to retain that and go out and execute uh, what you do. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome.